Hi, I'm Lee. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, we installed the boiler um, a couple of years ago. Well, a gas engineer installed the boiler for us. Um, when we moved into this house, um, there was no heat in and out whatsoever. Um, just a couple of old um, gas heaters that were in the fireplace. Um, so if you look back on some previous videos, um, I actually installed the whole uh, central heating system, running all the new pipes, installing the radiators, and then eventually we had the um, boiler installed by a gas engineer. Um, when I bought the deal, um, it just came with this mechanical timer. So when it's on, the heating is on constantly. You set the time it comes on and time it goes off. But when it is on, the heating is on constant. You know, there's no control. It's just churning around hot water constantly, um, which isn't ideal. It's not very economical. Um, and um, my first quarter, I think it used quite a bit of, quite a lot of gas. I think it was about for a 600 pound for the first quarter, which is ridiculous. Since then, last winter, we used it um, a lot less. We just had it on the morning when we got up and had it on in the evening um, while we sat down watching TV and stuff. Right, but Tardo got in contact with me and asked me if I wanted to do a video on installing their wireless smart thermostat. So they've sent me the starter kit V3 Plus, and also they sent me a couple of um, smart radiator thermostats. Um, I have already got radiator thermostats on the radiators, but they're not smart ones. So I said, yeah, I don't mind. We'll do an installation. Now I'm not paid by them or anything. They've just sent me these to do an installation video to show how easy it is. I've never installed one before. So this could be interesting, but let's get into this. Run the intro. Right, so on here it does say it comes with hot water control, but when you're uh, putting it into a combi boiler, um, it's not going to control your hot water because a combi boiler basically it heats the hot water when as soon as you turn the taps on, that's when it kicks in and heats hot water. So this will be just controlling um, the heating. But let's open the box up, get all the stuff out, and let's see how easy this is to install. Right, so let's get the box open. Uh, I must start by saying that Tardo have sent me this stuff. They're not paying me to do a review on this. Um, they've basically just sent me this stuff for free to do an installation video on. So I can be um, biased anyway. I don't have to say this is brilliant. I can say if I don't like it or not. You know, because I'm not being paid to make this video. But I have got the items for free. So let's get everything out of here. I have already opened this because I've obviously already looked at it. Um, I did start to record it, but you know, recording stuff, you start again. Right, so we have a wireless thermostat, our internet bridge, and our wireless receiver. Um, they do come with all these little stickers on there that have your authorization, serial numbers and stuff. Um, don't want to show you that. Um, we've also got a manual for professionals installers. So you can start there, even if you're not a professional. You can go online. Um, tells you how you can go online and can view a step-by-step -step guide. But you know, I've not installed this before. I've never installed a wireless thermostat before into a boiler, so this is new for me and I'm learning how you learn by watching videos on the internet and hopefully we're going to show you how simple this is. So you can work your way through the guide. So first of all, we install the internet bridge. Um, we have our ethernet and USB cables here. So take our internet bridge and we just basically plug our ethernet cable into there and this is just a micro USB. Plug that into that one as well. Now this needs to be plugged into your wireless router. If you've got a USB port on your wireless router, you can just plug your USB straight into it and that will power the internet bridge. Uh, but if not, it does come with a plug. 
So if you've got your a plug near your router, which you should have because your router's plugged into it, um, you can use that plug to hardwire it in. Just plug it into the socket. We've got a USB socket on, on the hub. So let's go and plug that in quickly. Right, so this is the back of my internet router. Uh, I've just got it high up on a shelf at the moment. Out of the way. So let's put our internet bridge up there. Uh, most routers, you'll have LAN sockets on the back, usually four. So all we do is take the ethernet cable, plug that into one of our three ports into there. And then, like I say, we've got a USB port on here. So we can plug our USB port into that one. All right. And now we wait for all the lights to go solid on here. All right, so once all three are solid, that's connected to the internet. So now hold a finger on the pairing button till the pairing light starts to flash. And now we'll go back to the thermostat. Right, so back to our wireless thermostat. Um, you have a little blue tab here that you just pull out. Just basically um, connects the batteries up. And then you'll see this start up. Shadow uh, height. Right, so we just hold our finger down for three seconds until the link comes up. And then we have our link symbols come up, which is now pairing with our internet bridge. This can take up to two minutes, so we'll just wait for that. There we go, and once it's solid, that is now synced to the wireless, uh, the internet bridge. So that's that part done the easy part right so now we're done with this you go on to the next part of instructions now at the top you have an s plan and a y plan that is not the system we've got we are installing this to a combi boiler so on here it gives you the wiring so the wiring on this is quite simple we just use this wire connect our brown and blue up to the connectors in here and then we'll, the other end our brown and blue will go into the live and neutral on our boiler and then the switch wires are the ones that go into your central heating com and the one that says central heating no uh, but first we shall get our receiver um, onto the wall and then we'll worry about plugging the wires in after that. So let me just install this onto the wall quickly. So you just take the top off and you've got your mounting points in there. So we'll just mark them out on the wall and get that screwed in. Ignore the state of the sockets at the moment. I've only just chased them in to do this job. I just need to refill them in as I'm still working in this extension room. So we're gonna put our controller up here just to see how we get on. If it works, great. If not, I shall find another position for it. All right, so let's just drill the holes and get this on. I'm just going to take the cable retainer out for this side. Don't have to worry about the other side because that's more where the hot water controls go. Right, let's keep them safe. Right, so kind of like wedged in a corner here with all camera equipment around me. So we just Put our blue neutral into our, into our neutral block. Right, so then our brown wire goes into our live. Just fit up behind these, they're like two metal plates in there. Just 
just squeeze them between the two metal plates, tighten them down. Right, now these two wires, these are just used for switching wires, so it doesn't matter which way they go in. But as your common is usually black, I shall put a black in the common. Make sure they're tight, but just don't over tighten them, otherwise you're just probably going to end up cutting wires. And then our last one goes in the central heating NO. Right, we put our wire clamp back in place. Now when you're putting these clamps on, same for when you're doing a plug, don't clamp them to the little bars. It doesn't do anything. You can still pull them out. Make sure you are clamping the main wire. You can always push these up out of the way. But you know, this goes for plug sockets as well. I see so many plug sockets where you see the live neutral and earth wires hanging out the bottom of this grip. And it's not the way to do it. You put the cable grip on the actual cable. Much more sturdier. It's not going to pull out. You just have these little wires under there. You're going to pull out. Right, so that's it. Wired into there. Right, let's just put that top cover back on there. You've got the screw at the bottom. You can... The screw in the bottom you could do up to keep the cover on there nice and tight. That's it. Stops that lifting off. Right, so there we go. That is installed. Now we need to go and turn our mains power off because we're now going to connect this into the boiler. So we need all our mains and everything turned off. So let me just go and flick the switch. I'm recording this out of sequence a bit. Um, this is already installed and working now. But I did just want to add on, if you do have um, some other thermostat that is already, you've already got connected and you're just replacing it with a far smart thermostat, you might already have something like this on the wall. Um, and all you'd basically have to do would be to take the wires out of here and connect them into this, into your new um, controller unit. So you won't have to go into the boiler at all. You can just swap the, your wires from your old um, controller box into your new one. But you do need to look at your manual to see, your boiler manual to see what wires go where. Just thought I'd add that in. Right, now to get to our connections on this boiler, just need to take the front panel off. Right, now before you take this off, and you play around the wire, be sure to know what you're doing. If you're uncomfortable with electronics or don't understand the instructions completely, then please get an electrician to come wire this in. It's going to be a five minute job. You can put it on the wall, uh, but when it comes to the boiler, if you're not sure, get an electrician to do it. Electronics can kill and you are also wiring up the wires to a 230 volt connector. If you're not competent and you don't know what you're doing, please, please get an electrician in. But before you get to this stage, please make sure you have turned all your electric off at the mains. Right, so all the power's off, everything's off. Test everything. The only other person in the house is the wife and she will not go anywhere near the electrics. Uh, so right, our connections are under this back panel here. So we just need to unclip them if we can get my fingers in there. Just got a couple of clips on the back. Just need to lift up. In our connection panel here, I'll show you these connections in the uh, manual for this boiler in a second. So here you can see our feed coming in from our fuse spur. So the mains is coming in here. Your earth, your live and your neutral, as marked up on here. Then you've got a supply out as well. So you've got your live and your neutral on our thermostat that we're plugging in we're going to be putting our brown and our blue into the live and the neutral 
looking in our manual for this boiler, we have only got the one wire, which is linked. They have links in at the moment for the hot water and the, um, the heating. So because we only have the one wire, so we need to use the switch live connections that are in the Tardo uh, manual. And from the boiler instructions, if we're attaching an external heating controller, we need to take off that link wire. So let me just do that. All right, so this is our hot water. We've taken out this link wire, which goes, not the hot water, sorry. <laughs> this is our heating link wire, which goes from there into the live supply out. We need to remove that link. So let me just get in here because we've got to leave the the hot water one is in the live side as well. So I just want to pop that one out. This is down down there now. So that is the link that's taken out of the hot water. I want to make sure. Sorry, I keep saying hot water. That is the link taken out for our heating. We want to make sure the hot water one is still in there. Yeah, so I just want to snip a little hole off the end of this one. Really going to be a thin wire in there. So I'm going to take off that top one. We're just going to push our wires through here. Take enough of the rubber out. And I'm just going to do this screw up, this grommet up. We're just going to hold that wire in place, strain relief. And we can pop that back into its home when we're done. Right, so we're going to take out brown live wire. We're going to pop that in to there, which has also got a link wire in there. So that's it. We want to make sure those wires are fully in and no bare metal exposed. Right, we want our blue wire going into our neutral supply out. Again make sure that is all the way in and there's no bare metal, no bare wire showing. Right, so they're nice and tight, just give them a little tug to make sure, yep. Right, and now our grey wire we're going to put into the heating Obviously, we now got a common left over because we're using the switch live and not the um, what they call the potential free, which a potential free I think is a, a very low voltage or no voltage at all connection. Right now, included um, with the starter kit are these um, the Wago connector blocks. So, because this one is now not used, we're just going to put that in our Wago. They're probably not Wago, but similar to Wago. Just going to put that in there so that the wire is not obviously going to touch anything or short out. Right now, you just snip that back in place. Double check your work. I shall zoom you in. I'll get you a bit closer. So hopefully you can see in here now. So that is our live going into the supply out live. Got our neutral going to our supply out neutral, and then we have a grey wire there which is going into our heating control or our, our heating switch live and then we've left in the wire for our hot water which is connected between live and live return and then the wire in our Wago box so that's it we can put this back up but now we need to take the cover back off there and remove the black wire and put a 
jumper wire in. So I just close all this back up, put this back together. And another tip, do not leave any jumper wires or anything floating around in there or any metal. Actually, quickly before we close this up, I think I'm going to take out or disconnect this mechanical timer, which is quite simple. It's just got a push connection under there. So this just slides up out of the way. And this should just pull out. Yeah, just the pins pull out of there. So I'm just going to fold that up, that fit in that hole there. Right, so this is our Worcester manual for our boiler, and as you can see here, um, appliance external control connection. So we're basically connecting external controls. So you can see the electrical power supply from the external equipment is supplied from terminals live, neutral, three and one earth. Now this doesn't have an earth so you don't have to worry about that one. But if we go down to here, which is number three, that's your live and neutral supply out. And then the switch live from the external equipment, so for our heating zone, connects to terminal four and remove the pre-wired link. Uh, the rest of it is about preheat function and the water so you don't need to worry. So get connection 4 that is where our heating is and as you follow the line up you can see it's a switch live from the external control so it's 230 volts. Same with 3 where you've got your supply live and neutral it's 230 or 240 volts. So that is the live supply to the external controls. So that's your live and neutral going to the external controls and then your switch live going to your external controls. So you need your manual because you need to know what you're wiring into, whether it's a switch live or just a potential free switch like with, where there's no voltage. Because if you get it mixed up, if you put 230 volts into a switch that doesn't need it, you're going to blow something up. So you must know how to you know, sort of read these and understand what they're saying to you. So when we look back in the Tardo, you can see this is the switched live diagrams. Let's zoom out a bit. Yes, yeah, so you let switch live diagrams. So in our box that we've already wired up, our live and our neutral stay the same, and our CHNO stays the same but we need to remove that black wire we put in the CH common and put a link wire in there which came in the pack supplied. Yeah, it's just like that little um just they probably that little purple one in there will do it. Oh, it's just under the screw on the bottom. Take that off of there. Now the light's not very good at the minute. So, our black wire will be placed into here. We need to disconnect that one. So we can take that out of there. And then we just take our um, we just take our link wire. Just going to bend it around my screwdriver. This is a smaller one of the two that was supplied. So that needs to go in where the live is as well. It's a bit dark at the moment in here. Because I've got no power on and no lights. So I'm just going to slide that up into there. We want to make sure our live wire is still up in there as well with our new link wire. So 
I'm just going to use one of the other connector blocks that they've given us just to put in here. Keep that wire safe from touching anything. Hopefully this is just, hopefully this will fit under here somewhere. Hopefully that will stand there out of the way. Find out in a minute. Let's put the cover back on. Yeah, just that wire's out of the way. I mean, you can just cut it off and tape it up, but that's good enough. And that is basically it. That should all be all be wired in now. So we just get the cover back on our boiler, and uh, we'll get the mains turned back on. Right now, it's all back together. The last thing we got to do is just turn our boiler back on it's also going to turn on it's also going to turn on the Tardo main unit so it just says to leave it turned on for 30 seconds which we will do and then we're just going to hold the Wi-Fi button down here for three seconds so it can start pairing with the rest of the system We'll leave that going. Now I have put this right next to the boiler, which is metal, which could interfere with the Wi-Fi signal, but we'll find out soon. So it could take two minutes. No, oh, there you go. Should be going solid on. That's not quite solid. It says the solid on indicates successful pairing, but it's not blinking fast. So we'll see if that goes to solid. Right, so we seem to have a solid light now, no blinking, so that should be that paired. Now, the last thing we have to do is configure it. You only have to configure it if you're using um, a combi boiler or a gravity fed system. So for a combi boiler, right, we've got to press these two buttons down for five seconds until the colored power LED shows the current configuration. So for a combi boiler, we want it to glow yellow, so then it doesn't have any hot water control. Right, so hold these down, the two test buttons, a hot water and a heating for five seconds. So our color is displayed there, and then we press the heating button to cycle through the color. So there's blue, there's green, and there's the yellow. So it was already on the combi boiler. It says in the manual that it defaults to the S and Y plan, which is that green colour. So we want it on the yellow for our combi boiler, so we just leave that for five seconds, and it should blink. I don't know if that was a blink. And then that will stay solid for 20 seconds for the colour of the selected configuration, according to the manual. So Let's see if it goes back. Right, so that should now be saved as the combi boiler. Now to test it, we just press the heating button. This light should start fading in and out, which it is. And that indicates the test mode is active. And press the button to turn the relay on or off. And I can hear the relay in here clicking on and off. Not sure if you can. Let me put the microphone up against it. So there we go, we can hear the relay clicking on and off. So this will now exit this testing mode um, in two minutes when you don't touch any buttons. So really this hot water button should be inactive now. Yep, doesn't do anything because we've got it on the on our combi boiler mode in the configuration. So that is correct that that hot water button does nothing. And that was about two minutes and we're back to the solid light. So it looks like we're all set up and ready to go. Right, so all that's left new now is we'll get our phone, we'll download the app and we'll scan these codes in. Right, so I shall record my phone screen. Right, so we're just in our app store. 
do a search for Tardo. There it is at the top of the logo. And all we'll do is click install. Wait for that to install. All right, now we open the app. Right, and it's going to ask us to create an account or if you already use it, sign in. Now I already have set up my user account, so I'm just going to sign in. I'll blank this out because I'm not going to show yet. Right, so now we can choose a name for this device. Um, I have already been in here and set it up, uh, but you can just call it whatever you want. Of course, mine's LCW DIY. So I'm going to confirm that I'm using that one, but you just put your name in and that's it. Right, now you can enable uh, geofencing. Uh, we're not going to do that now, but this will detect when you go out and when you come back, and I think it can automatically turn your heating on and off. So not now. Right, so now we're in the app. So welcome. Um, the middle tab there, you can see we have no devices yet. So let's go and add a device. Yeah, we we'll do the, it's the third one down. We're doing the wireless temperature sensor. So you've got the th smart thermostat at the top, but I think that's hardwired. We're using the wireless. So we'll click on that one. Please register your internet bridge first. Okay, right, so start registering. Right, the internet bridge didn't actually have a sticker that came off. It's actually on the side of the bridge, so I'll just go and grab that quickly. Right, so I've just gone and unplugged that from out on the hub. So I'm just going to scan that code in once on the back of there. So that's one, register to the internet, yes. So is this picked up? So rooms heating, has that picked up all my other devices as well? Are they all linked in there? Yes, it's already picked up. All my other devices. So let's me go and plug the internet bridge back in. So that seemed very simple. I have all my codes, all the stickers I took of the devices and add in here, and it's picked up all the all the serial numbers on there automatically. So it like it's like it knows them all. Yeah, that's that sound. The wireless receiver is connected. Internet bridge connected. And the wireless temperature sir. And the wireless temperature sensor is connected and the battery is good. Click on blink display. If we click on blink display, it'll come up on there. That all looks like it's connected, so it's it's recognized every item I've got on got connected just from registering that internet bridge. So that is it, let's come back out of there. So you can see the heating is 25.5 degrees already. Yeah, it's pretty warm in here. And then we can go into that, we can slide our temperatures up and down. And then we can see it changing on the tardy wireless thermostat. Slide it back down again to 13. And then you can see that one go down. So that all likes, looks like it's good. So if I put that up to the maximum it goes up to is 25. There you go, it's just climbed up to 25. Uh, but it's obviously not going to come on because the room temperature is already, I'll press that button, it's already 26.2 degrees. So I'm not going to be able to test this and turn it on. But that looks like it. So you go, we've probably got a lot of other settings we can go through in this app, but that is probably for a, a different video. Um, you can see how I can control the temperature up and down here, can turn it on and off, like manually control it. I um, think there's a lot of other settings where you can yeah, smart schedule. So yeah, so you got your heating. So you can set mon um, Monday to Sunday. You can get home modes, away modes, which is when that geofencing setting comes in handy. So it knows when you go away, it will automatically turn it off for you or turn the temperature down. And when you're home, you can set up, you can schedule days, Monday to Sunday, Monday to Friday and Saturday and Sunday, then each and every day. You can actually set 
um, the time it comes on in the morning and obviously then the time it goes off and then if we go back you can set your day time and then you can set your evening time for when it comes on and goes off so you know this is it will go off at 10 o'clock and it will sit on 18 degrees so we'll turn that down to 15 just click the tick button at the top so that's it, it'll be 15 degrees at night 20 degrees during the day and in the morning oh, so in the morning we can change that down to 15 so that ends at 7 o'clock in the morning click a tick and then we can set our temperature throughout the day obviously you can set it up for however you want so you've got the schedule on there so you don't need that programmer that we disconnected you don't need that program anymore you can all done via the app so i think i'm gonna have a lot of fun with this over the next few days we'll have a little play with this when the weather gets a bit cooler all right let's have a quick look at one of these smart thermostats i'll probably do it it's going to be short i'll probably do it in another video just to do this as a separate thing because i literally think that is going to connect on top of my radio it's already got um i'll do a video on that next this one's probably getting a bit long um you know my, this is just mainly an install um see i'd like to thank tardo for sending me this um i've enjoyed installing that that was a very simple process if you know a little bit about electrics you know that was a very easy install just to put a couple of wires in there and then everything else is like linked up together so the install of this was yeah pretty amazing pretty quick if i wasn't filming any all of this I would have had this done in maybe half an hour. So yeah, that was a very quick install indeed. So yeah, a big thanks for Tardo for sending me this over. Um, so we'll do another video on putting the Thought Smart Radio thermostats in. Um, and then we'll have a look in, in the same video, we'll have a look at uh, more of the controls when I've got familiar with them, when I've had a little play around, obviously when the temperature has dropped a bit because I can't adjust the temperature at the moment because it's hotter than what you can set this to. So yeah, we'll have a look at that in the next video. But yeah, I hope you liked this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope it showed you how simple it is to get you know one of these smart wireless thermosets installed. Now we'll have a look on um I will have a look on Amazon and see what the prices are of these. Um see how cheap they are. But I, I, I understand, I think I've had a quick look, and now I think they are a lot cheaper than Hive and you know the other competitors, and um so far. You know, I've got nothing to compare it to. But so far, I'm quite impressed with how this has gone in and how I can just control the heating now. And it's going to save me a fortune over the winter. Because before the heating, you know, we'd just have it on all day. And it costs a fortune just for this to churn water out constantly. Now I have it temperature controlled. When the room reaches the temperature, at least this will shut down for a little while. And give itself a little break and save me spending money on a load of gas. But thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've um, hope it helps you on making a decision whether you want to install um, a wireless smart thermostat or not from uh, Tardo. Tardo. And if I pronounce the name wrong, I've been saying Tardo and Tardo all through this, and I can never remember which one it is. But please like, please comment, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, so then you'll see when I do the next video of installing the smart radio thermostats and we'll have a li little more look into the app once I've gone through it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.